The past couple months or so, my local weaving group has been making plans to do demonstrations at the Houston Fiber Festival this month in June. Uh, we're really excited about this. It's been a while since we've been able to demonstrate for the public, and we are so ready for this. So this is a little bit of video about our setup process. One of the first things we need to do is pick patterns. One of our looms is going to have a rose path pattern on it. This is a really easy pattern that everybody in our shop is familiar with, and you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. One of the other looms is going to have a lace pattern on it, and I think we're going with the Spot Bronson on this one. We have a new to us 12 shaft loom that we are really excited to show off this time. We were looking at patterns and while all of these are amazing, they're way too complicated for demonstrations while you're talking with people. So I'm looking at some simpler ones. These were okay, but they're not really wow. And some of them are still a little long. And then I found this one. It looks great. It shows off what a 12 shaft can do. And the repeats are only an eight pick repeat. I'm like, perfect. But this one looked a little lopsided to me. So I went into my weaving app and I shifted four of the threads uh, in each section of the pattern to balance it out a little bit. I was a lot happier with this. And the, my app also lets me turn this into a lift plan since the 12 shaft is a table loom. Our next step is picking out colors. So I went into the shop stash and looked to see what we still had a lot of. Um, I was looking at different color combinations and none of them really spoke out to me until I got to this green and silver, which is lucky because we have a lot of both of these. So yay! So then I plug these colors into the app. They look gorgeous. I love this. And now it's time for the warp math. So I weighed each cone to estimate the yards we had of each. And then I did some number crunching. We decided on 20 inches wide and four and a half yards long. That's going to use up most of these, but not quite all of it. So that should be pretty good. I also worked out the heddle counts so we can make sure we have enough heddles on each shaft. And we have to do some version of warp math for every warp we do. Next, I measure out the warp on the warping board. I like to do multiple small bouts when I measure out a warp. And I find this process really relaxing. Some people don't like it, but I really like it. There's just something about the sight of a warp on the board that is just mwah, chef's kiss. I mean, just look at this. This is 101 threads all lined up side by side in nice, neat little sections. There's a beautiful cross right there that keeps everything in its place. It's just amazing. I love it. Next, we secure the warp by tying all four legs of the cross. I tie each one with its own little tie. I also tie off the loop at the end. And then I put in choke ties along the length of the warp, about every yard or two. I have a video series planned for later this year where I'm going to go through all these steps in much more detail. This is just a quick overview. Next, I'm going to chain this off the board. And what chaining does is it just controls your fiber, makes the threads so that they can't tangle. It's the same idea as a crochet chain where you're just pulling loops through other loops. It's really easy and it really helps control your fiber. After chaining, I use the chain itself to secure the last loop. And then my warp chain is ready to go. I usually mark it with a sticky note so I know which one this is. And this is one chain out of five. 
We recently had a warping day where a group of us got together to set up three of the looms, and I got zero pictures of any of that. The only pictures I had that day were of this cute, teeny, tiny grasshopper. Look at him. Isn't he precious? So we managed to get two looms set up and start on a third, all while fending off this beast. This is Justin. He's a four-month-old Great Dane puppy that belongs to our shop owner. And he's worse than a f kitten. This is him with his big brother Merlin. We love them. Okay, okay. Back to the setup. I usually set up looms front to back. So I start with slaying the reed and then I thread the heddles, and then I beam onto the back beam. We use these window blind slats as warp separators. Then we tie onto the front and tension, and then I do some test weaving to check for mistakes, and I found a few. As I looked at these, these were in the middle of my warp, and it was really just threads where I miscounted shafts and put them one shaft off from where they needed to be. So with these threads, I decided the easiest way was going to be to just cut these heddles off and move them to the correct shaft. These can be repair heddles later on, and this loom has plenty of heddles. I also found one thread that was wrapped around its heddle, which is going to break eventually, so I re-threaded that one. Aside from our bigger looms, I am also teaching a couple of drop spinning classes, and both of my classes have sold out. So I'm preparing the materials for those classes. I'm probably going to bring some tablet weaving. We're also going to have a variety of looms there, some triangle looms, probably some rigid heddles, maybe some bobbin lace. Uh, we will definitely have lots of spinning wheels, drop spindles, a wide variety of fiber arts. We will probably be along one of the sidewalls here. And it's a lot of fun. There's a ton of great vendors, and we encourage you to come stop by, say hi, if you're going to be in the area. Check out the website below for more information on vendors and classes and location. Thanks for watching, and happy weaving.